Hey everyone, so late last year I switched from using a Wacom and Photoshop to using the iPad and Procreate for drawing. And it was a whole new world, I had to learn things all over again. But there were a handful of settings that I thought were really, really useful and had I known them from the beginning, uh, I think it would have made the transition a lot easier. So I've compiled them into this video and I hope it helps you guys. My iPad her desktop is really messy. I really need to clean this up. Um, by the way, if you like this wallpaper, it's also available on my website. It's an artwork that I've done. Uh, so please go check that out. It helps support the channel and allows me to make these videos and make more artwork. So this won't apply to everyone, but it applied to me. Uh, but you'll see here on the left, you've got the controls for the size of your brush and also the opacity. I'm a left hander and having this on the left hand side is really not useful and I found myself constantly accidentally rubbing over it. So you can change the handedness of the UI by going to preferences and then clicking on right hand interface. Here we go. And then it moves it to the right side. One other thing I should mention about this UI is that you can actually move it around a bit. So if you just move the cursor over, you should be able to pull it out and hold and then now you can drag up and down and move it into the position that you like. So I prefer it a bit lower, like that. Okay, good. As you're drawing, you're definitely zooming in and out quite a bit. So zooming in to get into the details and then obviously zooming out to see the big picture. You'll feel like as you pinch and you know pull with your two fingers, generally it also respects rotation as well. And I don't know about you guys, but I found this kind of annoying and I always wanted it to just stay in the same plane or not rotate. Uh, because for me, I feel like if I want to rotate the canvas, I'll just rotate my iPad. I think it's much uh, nicer doing it physically that way. And I don't like when the canvas is off by a few degrees because I'm not sure what is it exactly a straight line or not anymore. Thankfully, there is a way to turn this off. So you just have to go up to the wrench icon and then go to gesture controls and go to the general section and then click on rotate with pinch and zoom. So turn that off. And now when I zoom in and out, it, can't, it won't rotate anymore. It's locked in that position. As you get more familiar with Procreate, naturally you're gonna start wanting to pull up shortcuts and use actions and things like that. You can do that really easily by using a thing called the quick menu, which is actually disabled by default. And it's something that I didn't discover until much later on, uh, a few months after I had gotten Procreate. So uh, to turn that on, we wanna go up to the settings wench and then also go to gesture controls and then go to quick menu. You can assign how you want it to be activated. I like it on the first option, which is to tap the square button. Now, when I go to tap the square button here on the right, the quick menu appears. Each item in the quick menu can be configured. So for example, if I don't want this item to be merged down, I can click and hold on it, and then it'll give me a selection of actions that I can change it to, depending on my workflow. One way to really improve your workflow is to have preset templates or uh, canvas sizes for your drawings. And there is a way to set that up by going to the gallery, going to the plus button, and then instead of selecting one of these, select the little plus icon right here in the top right. Here we can set all the basic settings. So for example, I can name this Instagram portrait. And then I can input the dimensions for an Instagram portrait image, which would be 1080 width by 1350 height. And if you want to make a retina resolution, just double these sizes. And you can see here, I can also set the DPI, maximum layers. And this also will recalibrate itself depending on how much RAM your iPad has and what the dimensions of the image is. Also over on the left, you can set the color profile and I don't really know which one to choose, so I just leave it normal. RGB because this is for display. If I want to do print work, maybe I'll go to CMYK. We also have time-lapse settings, which is really amazing. Procreate automatically records every single drawing you do, and you can also set the dimensions and the quality of the recording. Finally, below this, you can see the canvas properties. You can set the background color and whether the background is hidden or not. So now I can click Create. And it's taking me into the canvas, but if I go back to the gallery, I can see it's sitting there as an untitled artwork. What I'd do is I'd call this Instagram portrait. And every time I want to create a new drawing using this template, I'll just duplicate it by swiping left on it and then selecting duplicate. 
and now I'd use this for my drawing. You can create all kinds of templates. For example, I've created a storyboard template, which is here, which just has a bunch of pre-drawn boxes. So I don't need to worry about setting up the file every single time. The next thing you might be wondering is where is the file information? So we can actually see that by going up to the wrench and then also clicking on canvas. If I go down here, you can see canvas information. And this gives you all kinds of information such as the date created, the date modified. Um, you can also on the left here see dimensions. You can see how many layers you have, your color profiles, video settings. And this is interesting, uh, they've got statistics. So you can see how many strokes you've done in the, in the drawing, which is pretty cool. Also how many hours. So <laughs> you can tell I spent a long time on this one, 12 hours and 45 minutes just doodling around and the total file size, which is 101 megs. Okay, so this is the last setting I'm gonna share with you guys. And it's also the most important because it will really affect your drawing experience with the iPad and Procreate. So when I first got this set up and I started drawing, the Apple Pencil kind of felt a bit weird and I didn't really like the feel of the pressure. So naturally I thought that the way to fix this would be to go into my brush menu and you know edit a brush and then go to the Apple Pencil section and play with these settings here, the size, the opacity, and the flow. And that is the right thing to do. That's where you can fine tune how brushes feel. But I didn't realize there's actually a setting above this that's a global setting, and that's where you should be looking first before you get into any of this stuff. So let's close this. And the magical setting is found here. You gotta to go to settings, preferences and then pressure and smoothing and this graph is what I was talking about and this is called the pressure curve so the way it works is you've got two axes and the X horizontal axis at the bottom is your uh, pen pressure from the Apple stylus and the vertical Y axis is the pen pressure applied in this software so yeah the best way to think about it is see the horizontal axis as the hardware or this is basically the the values that the Apple Pencil are receiving from the physical pressure and then the vertical y-axis is how much pressure the software or Procreate is applying to the canvas and just to explain this a bit better let's say I pick up this node here and I put it right here so that's on this line here which basically means that's at the 75 percent point of the hardware axis uh, basically that means that when the Apple Pencil reaches 75% of its pressure, it will hit 100% of the applied pressure in Procreate or in the software. And you might be wondering, why would you do this? Like, And the reason I did this is because I don't like having to press hard all the time because it leads to a lot of fatigue in my hand. So I want to be able to draw with a lighter touch, yet still be able to achieve maximum pressure. Alternatively, you could do this the other way around. So I could put this node down here and that would mean that when I hit 100% pressure on my hardware or in the Apple Pencil, apply only 75% of the pressure in the Procreate software. And I'm not sure why one would want to use this. Maybe you're naturally heavy handed and you want your brush strokes to appear lighter or softer. But yeah, that's kind of the way I think about it. And so let me just move this back up here. By default, your setting will just show a straight horizontal line from the bottom left to the top right. Um, but you can copy my curve if you like. But what I really recommend you do is play around with the settings until it gets to a place where you feel like it really works for you. I'm gonna make an in-depth video on this feature and just some different examples of pressure curves and draw out some examples so you can really get dive deep and understand how this thing works. Okay guys, that's it for this video. I'm gonna be doing a lot more iPad and Procreate related content in the coming months because I just think this is a really awesome setup and I'm super excited about it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And if not, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.